uh, I'd like to welcome you this afternoon and our goal here this afternoon is not to set standards that have already been set by CLSI. We recommend that you go to your book and that you use standards and protocol called the standard of care that is set in your books and that you all follow that standard that you also refer to hospital policy and procedure manual. So anything that we show you this afternoon is not an intent to take away or to subtract from standards that are already in place by your hospital protocol. First of all, when we talk about uh, venipunctures, we want you to obviously recognize that there are three sources of blood, one being venous blood, blood drawn from a vein. Another, a second, being capillary blood, blood obtained from a skin puncture, like on a finger or a heel. And a third being arterial blood, blood utilized for an arterial blood gas. We then would like you to know that there are two sites that we recommend that you stick to when you're doing venopunctures. One is called anti-cubital fossa. An anti-cubital fossa is, if I were to roll my shirt up here, and I were to take this marker, and I were to draw kind of a circle right around this area of my arm, this would be considered the anti-cubital fossa. And this is one site that CLSI and the standards have recommended. The other site is the veins on the back of the hand are recommended for a venipuncture. And these are referred to as the dorsal metacarpal veins. If you remember a little bit from anatomy, the wrist bones are called carpal bones. The bones of the hand are referred to as metacarpals. And so these veins over this area are referred to as the dorsal metacarpal veins. Really going outside of this protocol and drawing blood from areas in here or the wrist or something like that is totally something that we're against. I don't let my students do that. That is not part of standard of care. If that is required because of a unique situation, then really your medical doctor or something like that should be consulted prior to doing any procedure like that. Hi, I've asked Veronica Martinez to help join us right now to demonstrate the selection of veins within the antecubital fossa. You notice, first of all, that Veronica is assuming a position referred to as the anatomical position. The anatomical position is simply a person standing erect like I am now, the palms of the hands facing forward, and the thumbs out to the lateral side of the body. And any selection of veins, we're going to make that selection based off of that the patient may be in the anatomical position, or they're assumed to be in the anatomical position. And the first selection of veins, according to CLSI, within this area of the forearm, the anacubital fossa, is the median cubital. And the median cubital I've drawn here in red. So the median cubital would be the first vein that I would select if one is available, if you actually see one on inspection of the arm. The second veins, and you have two choices here, would be either this one in green called median cephalic or this one that's lateral over here on the arm called cephalic. So the cephalic, either median cephalic, and recall that anything towards the midline of the arm is referred to as median, okay? So if these are coming towards the center, they're coming towards the median side of the arm. So this vein right here in green would be the median cephalic. This one over here would be called the cephalic. That is your second choice. The last choice, and the one to try to avoid at all costs, if possible, is the basilic. And the basilic I've drawn here in blue. And the reason we want to choose the basilic is the very, very last choice, is that the basilic is parallel by two nerves that run on either side of it. And so if just the slightest movement of your needle Okay, the redirecting the needle, maybe not that you even meant to do it, but just redirecting it slightly. You could damage or hit one of these nerves that run down each side of the basilic here that I've drawn in blue. The other problem with the basilic and the reason we want to try to avoid it is that 
the brachial artery, which is a quite a large artery that runs down your arm here, almost right on the inside of your arm, and then rolls out here in the antecubital fossa, is very proximal or very close to the basilic vein. And so if I put my finger right here, I can actually palpate or feel the brachial artery. And so it's also possible to puncture the brachial artery if you're using the basilic as a choice. So once again, just in recap, you would want to draw the median cubital, here shown in red, as your first choice. The cephalic in green, either median or the one over here. Or you would want to use as a very, very last choice, the basilic.